right, Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, before we start this lesson, we're going to give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakhah Kodash. Double honors to our elders and apostles, our great millstone, who taught us this truth. And Shalom to all the Achim and his truth and sincerity, starting with the 144,000 and the one third. All right, I'm the brother Khabar Yaqa. Brother Yaqa. And we're a couple of brothers from uh, GMS Atlanta, and we're just going to uh, do an in transit lesson. All right, and um, hold on. All right, and uh, this the lesson is going into uh, the simple pass on and are punished. Yeah, All right, kind of, kind of. It's, it's uh, the simple pass on and are punished, and uh, you know, basically just going into how these people in the world are, are walking blind, you know, they don't see what, what, what's about a uh, uh, they don't see what's happening, you know, they don't see what's coming, they don't see the day of the Lord coming. All right, they don't see uh, Jacob's trouble. They don't see uh, the MOTB, you know, being made mandatory. So when it happens, you know, they're gonna be punished, you know. And, uh, and also at the same time, you know, uh, the Lord isn't, you know, chastising these people like He does us. You know, that's that's another aspect as well. You know, the Lord is chastising us and getting us ready for that day. You know, he, He's building up our, our our mental strength. He's building up our spiritual strength. All right, through, through all the afflictions that we go through. Right. So without further ado, I'm going to get uh, Proverbs 22 and, and 3. All right. Uh, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3. It says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Right. And, and the prudent man, that's speaking about the ones that fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You know, the ones that have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That's what makes you prudent. All right. Matter of fact, let me look up that word for prudent real quick. It's uh it's Irawam. Irawam. And it says uh, subtle, true, crafty, sly, sensible. Alright, so if you're if you're a sensible person, you see the evil coming, you know. If you got any sense in your mind, you got you see the evil coming. You see Jacob's trouble, all hell breaking loose. You see uh, society collapsing. You know, you, you see ultimately the destruction of Babylon the Great, aka America. So if you foresee that evil, you're gonna hide yourself. And how do you do that? By by hiding yourself in the, in the scriptures, in the truth, all right, in the true doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shad. You know, it says in Psalms 91, yeah, I'm just uh, it's the Spirit. It says. Uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abides under his shadow, you know? So that's how you hide yourself. I believe this, the word for shadow was that Tazalai. I could be mistaken. But anyway, it's, it's going into the protection. Like the, sh the shadow is a representation of his influence, of his system, of the image. Oh, that spear, shadow is an image. Oh, yeah. So it's the image of the of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, just like you have an image of the beast, which has an influence, that is a certain level of protection, trusted in the staff of Egypt. That's that's the shadow of Egypt. But the Heavenly Father has his own shadow. And his shadow is protection from the evil day. Right. You know? But a lot of people they don't look at the Heavenly Father's shadow as protection. They think that this, the ways of this world is going to be more prosperous and profitable for them, but it's not. Go ahead. Con. And that's why it says, uh, the simple pass on and are punished. All right. And the NLT, it says, the, the simpleton blindly uh, goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. All right. So, and that's these people in the world. They're, they're a bunch of simpletons, you know, and they're going to, you know, suffer the consequences of. You know, not acknowledging Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, they're gonna suffer the consequences of not repenting. You know, of not being sorrowful for all the wickedness. You know, so uh, the, scripture, the scriptures, the scriptures say, in all your ways acknowledge Him. Right. So you're supposed to be acknowledging the Heavenly Father in all your ways. That's uh -huh. that's what keeps you from slipping. That's what keeps you from stumbling upon the dark mountain. Jeremiah told us that. He said, we brought that out last week, give glory to the Lord thy God before he caused darkness and before he caused your feet to stumble upon the, the mountains. That's Jeremiah 13, Yeah, right? Jeremiah 13, I believe. 16 verses, somewhere around there. 
Khan. So you have to. How do you give glory to him through sacrifice? Khan. How do you give glory to him by being a protector of the widow and the and, and feeding the fatherless, man? Right. You know, which is charity. You know, these these um, we well, see charity cover a multitude of sins. That's a part of the shadow of the Almighty. You know, he's the, uh, cover, who's who's really covering? Is it actually your charity? No, it's the Heavenly Father. That's a part of his protection when you have charity and you take care of those who can't take care of themselves, like the widows and the fatherless right. and, the, and the lame, which the lame isn't talking about people who are goofy, but people who are physically impaired, right. you know, can't do for themselves. You know, that's just a part of our portion that we're supposed to do as the faithful. Go ahead. All right, and that's an acceptable sacrifice, you know. Yeah. Like, like the brothers mentioned, you know, uh, taking care of the fatherless, you know, uh, comforting the widows, you know, yeah. you know, uh, you know, healing the blind, the the the, the lame, the sick. Yeah, how shout did that? Right, and we're doing it now through the word. You know, of course, those miracles are actually coming. Yeah. You know, on a physical level, but we're actually doing it through the word right now. You yeah. know. Cause we were all blinded at first, right? And but, like if a brother, if a brother died and he got a wife, you know what I'm saying? You, you know you want to kind of make sure, she, like she got she, brother got children. You know what I'm saying? He can't have his wife. He dead. You got to make sure his children are situated. You know, as a church, as a body to your to your portion. Because we all you know have responsibilities, but you just got to be considered about that because. That's what that's what the the apostles and the disciples were doing in the ministry in the ancient world. Right. Yeah, they, they were doing miracles, but at the same time they was also they was taking care of the different members of the church. You know? Go ahead, bro. Con, I, I'll read verse four too. It says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Right. So that's the key, you know, humility. All right, like um, like Elder Aratazal of our camp said, you know, it's, it's one thing that, they, that he learned, you know, you know, roughly paraphrasing what he said, but one thing he learned throughout the years is, you know, humility. You yeah, know, yeah. that that's what that's what's gonna get you on a chariot. Yeah. You know, without that, you know, you're not gonna make it too far. You know, and everything we just mentioned, you know, it takes a humble spirit to to, to do those things. Right. You know, a humble a humble spirit is gonna give you endurance. Right. In order to have endurance, you have to be humble. Yep. You know, go ahead, brother. All right. All right. Next scripture is 1 Corinthians 11 and 32. Uh, and it says, and you can speak on this if you want. Yeah, you got it. It says, uh, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Right. So when the Lord judges us, and we pray for mercy, we really do. Man, the Lord judgment, we scared of it. Calm. We scared of it. I'm be honest with you. But um when we are judged, the chastisement is not for our destruction, but for our um upliftment and our purification. That's why the Lord chastises us. He chastises us because he loves us. Right. You know, but the the people of this world, the Lord don't chastise them. It's like damn how he how does he have this and how do they have that? Because the Lord is about to kill them. Right. And he's just, it's a lamb that's being fattened up for the slaughter. Right. He's not preparing them for that day. He's not preparing them mentally or physically for that day. They're not being prepared in the spirit. Right. And like, even if the Lord is, you know, jacking these people up, it, it, they're suffering for, for evil. You know, right. they're not suffering for righteousness. Right. You know, so it's. Peter speaks about that. It's better that you suffer for. Uh, Righteousness than for wickedness. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Go ahead. Yeah, because righteousness that's that's gonna uh, get you ready for the for the, these times. You know. Right. It's gonna make you stable. Yeah. It says um. Well, that was it on that. I'll read it in the NLT. It says, "Yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world." Right. Because if if the Lord then chastises us, we will be fornicators. Right. We will be sodomites. We will be idol, uh, idol worshippers. You know, this is the, the, why you think these people are in this world like this, so wicked and committing um, sin. 
because the Lord doesn't chastise them. He doesn't get them for those, you know, whatever demons or, you know, spirits that come that they come in, in interaction with. You know, for us, when it comes to, you know, keeping the commandments of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Yahushah, we do it because we understand. Of course, it's it's an essence of love and like, yeah, I love doing this. But at the same time, what happens when the demons come? What are you gonna do when demons are talking? It's not you talking; it's a demon talking in your head. What how, what are you gonna do when it, you don't? When, okay, it's a beautiful woman, and but she has a, a husband, and she's you know what are you gonna do when you? Oh yeah, you, you like keep the commandments, but it, but you want you want to have sex with her, don't you? What are you gonna do? It's the fear of the Lord that it makes you depart from evil. That's when the fear of the Lord kicks in. You know, because we know the Lord, we, we know he'll, we know, we fear him, man. We we know that his, his judgment is great. And so we, we try our best to stay, look, as a spirit. Woo! Call out Yahweh Shemashah. That's the license plate right in front of us. That, right in front of us that says believe. <laughs> yeah. And then the E, the the, the the second E is a three. Ooh. And we just went into that three man understanding. <laughs> 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 you can't make this up, nah, man. No, you can't make that. Up. Like, bro, this is the Lord's program, bro. Yeah. But but to add to you, that goes into um what you just said. That goes into what we started off with. You know, for seeing the evil. You know, if a beautiful woman is trying to entice you and she's got a, a husband, then what's gonna keep, what's gonna stop you from from uh, giving into that demon? The fear of the Lord. Yeah. You foresee the evil. You know what what the Lord is capable of, yeah, man. Yeah, you know that. You yeah. know what he's about to bring. We, bro, we don't want to uh, feel that that nuclear fire, oh, man. Hell. <laughs> we do no. not want to feel that, no. bro. No. That's the worst judgment you could possibly get. Right. And we're trying to, we're doing everything in our, in our power that the Lord gave us to avoid that. You know? Right. That's right. By humility and the fear of the Lord, man. So last but not least, I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna get uh, Romans 13 and 3. All right. This is Romans chapter 13 and verse 3. It says, For rulers are not a terror unto good works, mm. but to the evil. Yeah. Right. So, like when, when Esau Edom, when he comes down with, with, with these draconian laws and shit, and when he comes down, you know, you know, kicking in doors, you know, throwing people in camps. When, when he does all that That's not for good works That's not for us That are doing These good works You know yeah. Us that are going out On the highways and byways You know Preaching the word yeah. You know Being diligent Being humble Fearing the Lord That's not for us That's for these, these people In the world man Yeah It's not a terror unto us it's, it's a terror to these people You know Yeah It says um, Will thou then Not be afraid Of the power Do which is Do that which is good And thou shalt Have praise of the same you know, so essentially, you know, if you do good, what was the scripture say? He makes even your enemies to be at peace with yeah, you. Peace. You know, so all we got to do is just, you know, keep on a straight and narrow, you know, keep doing the right thing. That's the key. Keep being humble, keep being humble. you know, keep praying and keep trusting in your how about you? Shot. Like that license plate said, believe, said keep on believe. believing, man. It said it. You know, you got anything? Oh, man. Um, we can wrap it up on that. That's beautiful. Con, con, hey, hey, Lowell in this lesson was edifying or comforting to a member of the elect. Lo, uh, once again, giving our praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham Rakagwadash. Double honors to the apostles, Grand Millstone, and Shalom.